Celtic Badass of the Week showcases a person of Celtic heritage each week. Those who exemplify the give-no-shit attitude and come out on top. They may come from our past or our present, but rest assured they come from all walks of life and legend. They are men, women, even old ladies and pirate queens. Now you don't have to be a muscled up Celt in a fur kilt swinging a mighty sword. You can just be a 4 foot 11 Welsh woman and suffragette who knows jujitsu. Now most of these badasses are all too real. And while some of these are only legend, they're badass legends. The only prerequisite is Celtic blood and badassness. Alright, this week's Celtic badass is Maria Pita. Now, Maria Mayer Fernandez de Camara e Pita lived 1565 to 1643. Now, she's known as Maria Pita. She was the heroine who defended Corona Galicia in northern Spain against the English Armada attack, an English attack upon the Spanish mainland in 1589. Now, I know some of you out there are like, Spain? I thought this was Celtic badass. Well... Let me educate you some. While Scotland and Ireland are most commonly associated with the Celtic people, the roots of Celtic culture can be found throughout Europe. More than a millennia ago, a Celtic tribe known as the Galaci settled in an area north of the Douro River. The region became known today as Galicia in north northwest Spain, and throughout their history they have held tight to their Celtic identity and culture. Today it's considered the seventh of the original Celtic nations, along with Ireland, Cornwall, Isle of Man, Brittany, Scotland, and Wales. The evidence of Galatia's Celticness is everywhere, from the Celtic language to the festivals and rituals that continue to flourish in the region. The palozas, or round stone huts, date back to 20, 2,500 years ago, and are believed to be of Celtic origin. I'll put, put them up there for you all to see. Now, but in particular about Maria Pita, is her defense of Karuna. Now, on the 4th of May, 1589, those bastard English forces, who had already gained control of the lower city, breached the defenses of the old city. Maria Pita, being a good wife, was assisting her husband, an army captain manning the defenses. But the tide of this battle had turned on them, and the English were breathing their fetid breath down their necks, of the Galatians, a cocky English commander with a banner who was intent on planting it and declaring victory, led the assault to the highest part of the wall. Now, I guess someone forgot to tell Maria Pita that they were about to lose because, well, enraged by the English onslaught and with nothing else really to lose, Maria Pita jumped into action. Pita, full of rage, snatched the spear carrying the English banner from the commander and ran him through with it, killing him with it. Then Maria Pita picked up a sword and fought back the English, killing many men. The commander Maria killed was the brother of Admiral Francis Drake. Now this demoralized the English troops, composed of 12,000 men, who began to retreat. During the battle, Maria Pita's husband was killed by a crossbow bolt that struck him in the head. Not to be affected by this, Maria Pita then appeared on the heights of the wall herself, shouting, Now, I'm probably going to butcher this, so don't be mad, but... Can ten tena hora que me siga, which means whoever has honor, follow me. Whereupon her troops rallied under her leadership and the English incursion was driven back. The English later abandoned the siege and withdrew to their ships. Peter's heroic deeds were honored and rewarded by Philip II, who granted her the pension of a military officer, which she received following the death of her husband, who was killed during the battle. Now that's kind of badass. Mm -hmm. 